is the time about how I dated my co-worker's cousin, and I also dated his best friend, his brother, and him. I was a messy ass bitch back in the day. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you are new, and if you are new, my name is Dakota. I create a ton of content on this channel, like story times, advice, lifestyle content, so if you like what you see today and you are new, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, it is free. Join our Coda Crew family, but if you're not new, you already know what my fucking time it is. Today we are back with another story time. Before we get into today's story time, don't forget to like this video. Comment down below what trips you guys are taking. This summer, Aubrey and I are actually going to Hershey Park in Pennsylvania next week, and I am so excited. It's gonna be my first time going away for the whole entire summer. I don't know about y'all, but does this summer kind of seem like boring? Not boring, but everything is kind of just like still. Like, I feel like nobody's doing anything. <laughs> Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe like as a collective, we need time to rest and recuperate and just sit back and kind of be instead of worrying and focusing so much on doing but it's almost just weird to see kind of like the shift in things I feel like this time last year I definitely was doing so much but I also wasn't doing like healthy things like I was kind of doing things that were just not not very showing of me of like how I love myself and things like that if that makes sense so I don't know maybe I'm growing and changing but let me know if you guys agree and also let me know down below if you all are taking any trips this summer before we get started don't forget to tune into my personal development podcast it's called sis let's heal available on apple spotify google all streaming platforms the link is always in my bio as well as a link to my lashes my perfume discount code literally like anything that you could imagine always in my bio, my intro song, my social medias, all that. And without further ado, let's get into it. This story time is actually kind of embarrassing and I never in a million years thought that I would come on here and I would share this story, but I come on here a lot of times and I tell my story about what thing, things like people have done to me and what I have learned from it. And I've done a couple where I'm in a story where like it doesn't paint me in the best light. And the reason is because in life it's so easy to look at everybody else and be like, you did this to me, you did that to me, you're narcissistic, you're a piece of shit, you broke my heart, you were a bad friend. But very, very, very little often do we look at ourselves and take accountability and say, wow, in this situation I was wrong, I hurt somebody else, whether it was intentionally or not, and that was fucked up and I need to apologize, but also I I need to take accountability and look within and realize how did we get here, how do we fix it, and how do we move forward. Now if you guys don't know, I grew up where I was not traditionally looked at as attractive. I like to say that I didn't get like cute or pretty until after maybe I was like 21 years old. A lot of people in high school like they kind of peak and that was never me. I didn't bloom until later on in life. Because of that I wasn't used to getting a whole lot of male attention. Like I did get some in high school but not nearly as much as my peers were getting. I had a lot of insecurity issues. I always felt like everybody was so much prettier than me. I felt like I just, you know, we didn't have a lot of money so I didn't really have like the best clothes. Like I didn't have the best shoes or accessories or makeup or hair for that matter. I was always very insecure. I wasn't nowhere near like a trendsetter or like traditionally attractive. I didn't have anything that anybody else wanted and I didn't feel whole within myself. I also had a lot of abandonment issues from my father. There was a lot of like family dynamics going on that weren't so great. I really didn't have the best of group of friends. I know how they say that when you're walking in groups of three and that one person gets left behind as you're walking. That was kind of me or I was the you can come if you want to type friend or I was the oh yeah we're already out girl just come like I know Never was put first so because of this where else are you gonna go for validation and attention you're gonna go seek it from men I can get that male to choose me that meant that I was valid that meant I was worthy that meant I was beautiful but most importantly it meant that I was loved what people don't address with childhood wounds specifically abandonment from our parents or caregivers is that it creates this downward spiral spiral of constantly seeking for outside validation constantly seeking for outside resources to make us feel 
whole, whether that's substances, shopping, food, sex, drugs, alcohol, etc. You get the point. So what happens is instead of realizing that validation, happiness, and that feeling of being rooted and grounded comes directly from within us and everything that we're trying to seek from outside of us is already within us. What we do is we seek it from unhealthy coping mechanisms. So what I would do is I would only feel whole if somebody was choosing me. I would only feel whole if somebody was loving me. I would only feel whole if I had a man in my life to validate me a lot of the times it wasn't even good validation it was honestly with a guy who was so underdeveloped such an asshole that I literally would be like okay well this must be love because at least I'm getting attention it's kind of like that little kid who they want attention so bad but their parents never talk about the positive things that they do they only step in to critique them when they are doing something negative or they only give them attention when they, they do something negative so what does that kid do they act out because acting out equals attention same thing with validation what am i going to do i'm going to seek validation from these men who treat me horribly because that's what i learned what love was I promise this makes sense i just need to tell you guys a backstory to kind of tell you how I got to where I was in this situation. So essentially what ended up happening was, this is where I learned to seek love, validation, and attention from. Now, as I left school and I got older, and I you know, was in my 20s, I started to really glow up physically, mentally, and spiritually. And because I was glowing up, I was receiving this attention from males that I wasn't used to. I couldn't even go to a gas station and pump my gas without somebody trying to get my number or talk to me and things like that. And I'm in no way saying this to brag or to sound like I'm better than anybody because I still struggle with self-esteem issues to this day. But I was getting so much attention from men that I didn't know what to do with it. I never knew basically because I didn't have it, you don't know what you don't know. So normally if you get male attention and somebody sees you getting it, they're gonna say like, hey Dakota, don't just say yes to every single guy that comes your way, you're allowed to say no. Because in my mind I was like, oh, if I say no to him, nobody else is going to come, right? So basically what I had learned was to, not learned, but what I thought was appropriate was to accept the tension from every single guy that was thrown my way i wasn't used to it right so i like was in here and i'm like now like 21 22 years old and i'm like oh my god like i don't know what to do with all this male attention that's coming my way so what that caused me to do was and also i was a chronic people pleaser and saying no literally you might as well just like gut me in my stomach because i couldn't freaking say it so i'd feel bad and i would give random guys my number that i knew i was never going to freaking talk to a day in my life because i felt bad for saying no or i felt bad because i thought well what if they hit me or what if they yell at me or what if they call me a bitch because in our society as women right now what happens is that we are getting punched in the face for saying no to a guy when he asks for our number we live in a very un we live in a place where it is unsafe to be a woman straight up and i was scared to say no basically subconsciously what i was doing is i was protecting people from that same hurt that was once protected on to me so i used to feel unworthy unvalidated unloved because so many people would tell me no so in turn as an adult who also was a chronic pleaser who also is an empath and who feels so much of other people's emotions and carries that on from my responsibilities i thought if i say no to this guy if he asks me for my number he's gonna feel rejection I feel have felt rejection my whole entire life and I don't want to push that feeling onto another human being so to appease his feelings even for two minutes even though I know that I'm probably never gonna see him or talk to him again I'm gonna give him my number this story is going to take place after the whole Adrian situation where I already was just beaten down to my absolute core with narcissistic and mental abuse I want to say this happened almost like a year after Adrian and I had broke up. Now, I had worked at this daycare ever since I moved back to Connecticut. So I moved back to Connecticut and I want to say it was 2013. And I started to work at this daycare and I worked there. And at this point, I want to say it was like 2017. So I had been at this daycare for about four years, definitely had you know got my feet wet i definitely built up some type of like respect around there because i was one of like the vets there i guess you could say so i was at a point where i was a head teacher in my classroom um, i had a lot of like freedom and control over my classroom and things like that because i had been there for so long now one thing about me is i love working by myself i can work in a group and i can work in a group dynamic but i really love working by myself i feel like i'm more productive i get things done a lot more easier so i was used to having only four kids in my classroom but as time was going by the daycare was getting a ton of new families enrolled so i was getting like so many kids in my classroom I had to like 
always pass a kid to another teacher that way I could stay in ratio because I, I was only one teacher so I could only have four kids in my classroom so if I had anything over that I'd have to just pass the kid to like literally whoever had room and I hated doing that because consistency is so important in a child's life so me and my manager talked and she basically was like we need to get you a co-teacher because at this point like you literally don't even have time to breathe you have no time to do your curriculum and I was at a corporate daycare and at corporate daycares it's not just feed the kids wipe their butts change them and go outside and do arts and crafts you have a curriculum that you literally have to follow the te the managers will come in and they will evaluate you they will watch you they will give you like a rating you have yearly reviews things like that you have portfolios in your closet so basically I'm getting paid like under minimum wage to be like an actual fucking teacher even though I'm not getting paid anywhere near a teacher's salary but that's neither here or there so this new girl one day came into our job basically my assistant manager knew her from a previous day care she had worked at she came and onboarded her onto our staff and for the sake of the video we're going to call her Casey so Casey was a very very pretty girl she was about three years older than me she was absolutely beautiful her makeup was always done like literally this She'd show up at seven o'clock a.m. at the daycare with a full face like this and I admire her for that I was like bitch yes go off do that because that is amazing <laughs> she seemed very responsible she seemed to be very sweet and have a good head on her shoulders and she was kind of like a floater teacher so she would go around to the classrooms if you needed a bathroom break because at this place we could not leave our classrooms we had to stay in ratio with our kids if we left the classroom it's like literally against the law you can get in trouble for that so the kids always have to be supervised so if you need somebody to come in to give you a bathroom break which you know means that you call over the intercom i need a bathroom break in room to see whatever what that person does is they'll come and they'll relieve you and you go use the bathroom or sometimes they'll come and they'll relieve you for an hour lunch break or to get supplies for your classroom that are some water or something like that things of that nature we were basically like prisoners we'd stay in the room for like eight hours a day and literally call 15 times to get one bathroom break girls literally would get utis because they would hold in their peas for so long horrible so Casey and I kind of got to know each other over the course of the next few months because she was always coming in to relieve me well one day comes and the manager basically tells me hey remember we talked about how you need a co-teacher well Casey would like to go into your classroom with you so you guys are going to be partners and I was like okay cool like Casey seems like a really cool girl we're both into the same things like we both like makeup and hair and fashion and clothes and YouTube and nails and things like that so I was like, this is going to be a great fit and it was for a short period period of time heavy on the short period of time Casey comes into my classroom and we kind of accumulate ac accumulate a routine um, she doesn't ever step on my toes she lets me do what I want in the classroom if she wants to put something on the wall she asks me first if it's okay very respectful and very mindful that you know this is my classroom and she's basically like just an assistant in it keep in mind I said that this was my classroom and she was just an assistant in it because when I do the daycare series we're gonna talk about how she low-key got me fired but that's a story for another time this time of me and Casey getting to know each other she ends up opening up to me about her family dynamic she tells me that she basically lives in like a mansion but it's basically divided into like four apartments so upstairs is her and her family downstairs are her cousins um, and this apartment over here it's like her grandma and things like that so because of that they're a very close-knit family and she tells me that she like has fires at her house all the time and that I should come one day if I'm interested that she'll get a couple of our co-workers to come too and it'll basically be like so much fun and I was like yeah absolutely I love doing bonfires over the course of time Casey ends up recruiting this one girl to come work at the daycare and we're just gonna call her Ashley so it was her cousin's girlfriend her cousin that lived downstairs from her it was his girlfriend so she you know boards her on and Ashley was probably like one of like the sweetest girls I ever met in my life she did literally did not have one mean bone in her body at all now let me make it clear over time me and Casey became very very close I would go to these fires at her house sometimes she would invite our a couple co-workers Ashley because she was you know in a relationship with Casey's cousin who lived downstairs she would often come to these too but let me make it clear that me and Ashley weren't friends we were acquaintances I had a couple conversations with her a few times yes I had her number but like we never texted one-on-one -on -one. we just weren't like close now me and Casey became really close because she's in the classroom with me every single day over time you basically build a bond with the person that you're with because you're with them for nine hours a day five hours a week you're with them more than you're with your girlfriend your boyfriend your family your kids and things like that so we became very close and eventually we got to know like pretty much everything about each other 
Now, after I went to one of these fires, during it, it was like literally so much fun. We all brought like food and stuff. I made brownies and buffalo chicken dip. We just listened to music and we talked about work and we gossiped about boys and we had some wine and it was like a really, really fun time. During that night, what I did, which is what I do to a lot of my friends, was I took Casey's phone and I took a picture of myself and I put it on Snapchat. Snapchat was really popping during this time and it's crazy. Do you guys remember when Snapchat was like more popular than Instagram and then they came out with that update and then it just ruined absolutely everything and nobody ever wanted to go on Snapchat again. Let me know if you guys remember that or not. That was like an iconic era, Snapchat. So I took a picture of myself and I put it on her Snapchat. I did this to like all of my friends because it would be so funny the next morning when they would notice and be like, Dakota, why the fuck did you take a picture of yourself and put it on my story? So I did that with Casey's story and then we had work, right? So that was Saturday. So Sunday rolls by and then we're at work on Monday. And she comes in and she's like, oh my God, you're so stupid. I saw the picture that you put on my freaking Snapchat. And I just started like hysterically laughing. I thought it was the funniest thing ever. And she goes, well, funny enough, my cousin actually ended up messaging me and being like that, like that girl's cute what's her name and I was like oh who and she says Damien now if you guys don't remember who Damien is <laughs> it's my crazy ex who tried to kidnap me so this was before that happened obviously so this is like the backstory to that but y'all remember Damien okay Damien was the one that was with Ashley so if you're confused Casey's my co-worker Ashley's my co-worker Ashley is dating Casey's cousin okay that's how Ashley and Casey know each other in the first place so I was like, oh, but doesn't he date Ashley? And she's like, yeah, he's so stupid. He does that shit all the time, and it's, like, really fucking annoying. So then she proceeds to tell me, but I also had his friend message me, and we're just going to call him Liam. So she says, me and his friend Liam, best friend, also messaged me and asked who you were too. And I was like, oh, really? And she goes, yeah, and he's single. And at this time, I wanted nothing to do with boys. I was so like over it that I just wanted to work on myself and focus on myself. And we all know that when you get to that point where you actually do genuinely want to work on yourself and focus on yourself, God and the universe are like, here's a guy that's cute. Let's dangle it in your face like it's a fucking Big Mac and see if you're going to accept or not. Did you learn your lesson? Probably the fuck not. You're gonna say yes, you're gonna end up in a relationship with him. I didn't end up ruining your fucking life. History repeats itself. So I was just like, I don't really know. I'm kind of like in this journey right now where I want to work on myself and be single. And she's like, Dakota, he's a really good guy. She's like, he has a really good job. He wants to be a cop. He wants to buy a house. He's really sweet. He has good manners. Like he has like a nice car. Like you really just need to give him a chance. He's a good guy. I wouldn't be putting you on or telling you about him if I thought that he wasn't a good guy. Looking back, she definitely was just trying to get me to talk to him. That way her cousin Damien wouldn't try to get with me because he was already with Ashley and that just would have been a hot mess. Spoiler alert, it ended up happening anyway, hence why we're telling this story. I basically tell her, okay, you know what, maybe I'll go on a date with him, see what it's about, but I was like, I'm not promising anything. We'll see what happens. It is what it is. So she ends up asking me if she can give him my number. I say yes, no problem, and I ended up finishing out my work day, closing up, and going home, and I opened my phone when I got home and I had a text from Liam, and it basically was like, hey, this is Liam, got your number from Casey, how are you? And we basically start exchanging conversation. Over the course of that next week, we're texting each other, getting to know each other, asking each other the typical, like, what's your favorite color? Who's your favorite sports team? I like Dallas Cowboys. Dallas Cowboys suck. Like, literally the same generic conversation. This is why I hate dating. If you guys don't know me, I don't like dating. I don't go on dates. I don't, I've never made a Tinder in my life, never made a Bumble in my life, have never been on any dating website ever because I don't like dating. It's so awkward, so uncomfortable, so fucking annoying really annoying so I don't like it I don't like small talk either like I don't want to know what your favorite color is I want to know what your zodiac sign is I want to know what time you were born so over the course of I want to say that next week basically me and Liam decide that we are going to go out on a date and he basically says I want to take you to the movies and go out to eat at this time at this day and I was like okay cool that sounds really good and the day basically comes around to when we're supposed to like go out on this date and he's kind of just like tiptoeing around things and he's like what movie should we see? What time do you want to go? Do you want to meet or do you want me to pick you up? Well, do you want to like go to the movies or just want to like eat? Or do you want to eat and go to the movies? Do you want to go to the movies and then eat? Like he was asking like so many questions and I was just like, why? Like, I can't stand that. If we have a plan, let's just stick to it. Let's just stick to the original plan. Why does it have to be chaos? Why does it have to be like, oh, let's like change this, this and that. My Virgo rising is like, mm, no, not happening. I just said her real name, Casey. <laughs> 
is he said you know what casey is having a fire at the house why don't you just come here we can meet up hang out sit by the fire and then decide what we're going to do and i was like okay no problem that's fine so i end up driving to casey's house go up the steps and it's my first time meeting liam let me remind you i've never met him besides this and i only saw one picture of him and it was from like a long time ago so i end up walking up the steps and i see him and he was cute like he was cute he smelled really good he was really friendly and we basically just chilled for a bit and he was like you know what it's getting kind of late do you want to just hang out here i promise like i'll take you out another day but i feel like you know we're already here and we were kind of enjoying our time already we had a couple drinks going we're by the fire and this time her like whole family was basically like outside right one of the cousins that was there was we're just gonna name him oh there's so many names we're gonna name him we're gonna name him junior okay so <laughs> I end up meeting Junior and he was Casey's cousin so he actually introduces himself he's like oh hi like what's up Dakota my name's Junior I am Casey's cousin and it was also Damien's brother okay so we're getting confused Casey is my co-worker Liam no sorry Damien is Casey's cousin Junior is Casey's cousin as well and he's brothers with Damien okay Liam is best friends and pretty good friends with the both of them with Junior and Damien right so Damien wasn't there that night I think he was like out or something and honestly we ended up having a really good night we played a couple games of beer pong some games of flip cup we were all just having honestly a blast we ended up wrapping down the night and I basically say I'm gonna go home and so Liam was like I'll walk you down to your car and I was like okay cool so he walks me down and he's like, oh, I have something for you. I meant to give this to you when we were going to go on our date, but plans changed. And it was uh, a bouquet of flowers and Reese's. <laughs> like literally two of my favorite love languages. You guys know I'm fucking obsessed with Reese's. Love me some flowers. And I thought that was like a very sweet gesture. So I was like, oh my God, that is literally so cute. I'm saying goodbye and I go home. Now, long story short, fairy tale did not live out with Liam. We ended up going to the movies maybe one time after that hanging out one other time and to be honest the chemistry just wasn't there he was a great guy he was cute he had his life together but the chemistry wasn't there you know what i'm talking about when you hang out with somebody a couple times and like they're cool and you can see yourself having fun with them or being friends with them but the chemistry is just not there that's exactly how i felt when it came to liam so what ended up happening was a couple weeks weeks roll by and we're texting you know here and there and he finally was just like listen i'm getting the the hit and the signal that you you are not interested anymore and if so that's fine but like let me know so I don't like waste my time you know and I'm like yeah I'm sorry it's just it's not you it's just like I just don't feel the chemistry or the spark and he was like no like I totally get it no worries you're a great girl I would love to be friends like no hard feelings I basically went to work like the next day and Casey came in and she's like what happened with Liam and I told her and she was like listen I totally understand what is going on in that situation like sometimes you just don't have a spark with somebody so she's like girl don't worry about it at least you tried that's what she kept saying she was like at least you tried at least you went out you did the date you tried your best and it just wasn't working out and i was like yeah exactly fast forward some time and casey ends up wanting to have another fire this was i want to say more towards the summertime so it was cancer season right so i ended up going to casey's house casey's house and it was me casey ashley you know damien's girlfriend and a couple of our co-workers and then this time her cousins and brother came out again and she was like super annoyed she was like i can't stand when they come here when i have friends over it's so annoying but i'm not gonna lie you guys they actually made it a lot fucking funner than when it was just us and her and our co-workers because i'm sorry but all we would talk about is work and i don't know if you guys are like me but i am not at work and i am clocked out the last thing i want to be doing is fucking talking about work let's talk about literally anything else but work like i said our character from the last fire junior casey's cousin was there and this night junior was being extremely flirtatious with me now the thing about junior was that he was so freaking funny and one thing about me is that i love somebody who can make me laugh i love somebody who is funnier than i am because i don't have to carry the team with the humor he was absolutely hilarious and he was so cute and like confident and i just fucking loved that shit right so there would be times throughout the night where we'd have to go more fire and more twigs and sticks to go put into the fire pit right and they lived 
like I said, it was like this mansion that was divided into like four apartments. And in the back, there was like a huge driveway, like a huge gravel driveway. But there was like a row of trees. It was like a literal forest. It looked like literally so secluded from everybody on the street. It was the coolest thing ever. I ended up going into the woods, getting a bunch of twigs and stuff. And every time that I would get up to go get some more firewood, he would come right after me. And so kind of, you know, every time we'd take a trip together, we would talk more, laugh more. And I kind of ended up flirting back. So I was like, ooh, like this is cool like I don't know he just, he's super cute and he's confident and he's like funny and then I sit back down with Casey and she was like I see what's going on over there but I do want to let you know that he like technically has a girlfriend and I was like a girlfriend where because he's not acting like he has no girlfriend and she was like well they're not like official yet but they're working on it but it's the first girl that he's really ever like been with like he's never really been in like a relationship before I kind of was like of course and to make matters worse he was a cancer and cancer and Pisces are supposed to be like perfect together so here I am thinking like oh my god this would be so cool if this ended up working out and then my plans got ripped to two shreds from Casey telling me that he had a girlfriend so after that I kind of just like backed it up a little bit because I was like yeah no no not the time not the time or place make matters even worse maybe 15 minutes after i found this out tell me why damien and like i said damien and liam were best friends so i keep on almost saying her name casey's cousin ends up coming up the stairs and behind him is fucking liam so i was like oh this is freaking awkward because like we just stopped talking like three days ago tell me why this man did not say hi to me he walked in and said hi to everybody else but me and so me i'm like oh that's what type of time we're on okay you're not gonna say hi to me i am not gonna go out of my way to say hi to you i kind of just brushed it off and i was like whatever he wants to be petty let him be fucking petty by himself the end of the night wraps around and he was like oh hey dakota and i was like oh yeah hi like you didn't say hi to me and he's like oh i'm sorry you know like i just like i didn't see you over there and i'm like you don't see us <laughs> you see me i'm literally right here how have you not seen me the whole night okay then I end up wrapping up and I end up leaving and I get an Instagram notification that Junior had actually added me on Instagram and Snapchat. So some time goes on and we end up just once in a while having a conversation. Like if I went out to Buffalo Wild Wings, he'd be like, oh, your food looks good. Or like if I posted something he, like, like, with like a song in the background, he'd be like, oh, I like that song. Like just little things like that kind of stupid. But then one day I ended up wanting to go on Instagram and look at Junior's profile and I saw that I was blocked. And I was like, wait. I know that I didn't do anything. I know that I didn't say anything wrong. So I was like, what the hell is that? So I ended up texting Casey and I was like, why did Junior block me from Instagram? And she's like, oh, I was gonna tell you at work tomorrow, but his girlfriend ended up blocking you because I guess they're official now and she saw you guys were talking on Instagram. So she just blocked you. And she's like, but there's no problem or anything. She just doesn't want him talking to you. Like it's not, it wasn't me that she was mad at. She just didn't want him talking to me. And I was like, whatever. Like honestly, I understood where she was coming from because the thing with her is that She's not stupid. She probably saw the messages and even though they were innocent in her mind, she knows who her man is. So she probably saw that there was either a chance for some flirtatious banter or she saw something she didn't like and then she blocked me. I wasn't too pressed about it. I was like, honestly, like, understandable. There was a fire that she had maybe a week later. I remember I was kind of like apprehensive to go because I was like, well, what if his girlfriend is there? I don't know how often she comes to the house. I don't know like what is going on, but like I don't want to come and have her like see me there and then like there's issues. Like I just, I don't want no problems, right? So I ended up asking Casey, I'm like, is Junior's girlfriend going to be there? And she's like, oh no, not at all. She actually at this point, I don't think has like come to the house really yet that much. So like, you're honestly fine. And she's like, either or like, you're my guest. No one's going to start anything. And I said, okay. So I end up going and it's just the same people. It's just me, it's Casey and it's, it's Ashley. Now, let me remind you. Ashley's boyfriend, Damien is Casey's cousin who lives downstairs. So as we're out at this fire, Damien ends up coming outside now he's never formally introduced himself to me because he had only seen me in passing one time so when he saw me he was like oh I don't think I've ever met you before my name's Damien and I was like oh hi I'm Dakota nice to meet you and he brought out his hand and I shook it and he was like asking us what shirt that he should wear to the club because he was going to the club at night he's like should I wear the pink or should I wear the blue and I was like oh you should wear the pink and 
we kind of ended up like popping jokes back and forth but that's just the kind of person that I am Ashley was sitting there and didn't seem to be bothered by it at all because apparently Damien's just like a really funny guy and everyone kind of jokes around with him so I only saw him for maybe like five minutes he ends up going inside that's it but keep that in mind because it's going to be important in the story later on so as the night goes by we are just outside chilling drinking and out of nowhere I see the front door open and Junior comes outside now again this is the second time I'm at this house I'm in the backyard trying to enjoy a fire and a nice night and awkwardness happens because like I said his girlfriend had just blocked me from his Instagram so it was just like weird because I'm like I don't even know if you're allowed to be anywhere near me I don't want to be disrespectful so he ends up pulling a seat next to me and sitting and I am a very sarcastic person but if you put liquor in me I am fluent in sarcasm so I kind of look at him and I was like are you even allowed to be sitting next to me right now and he's like what are you talking about I was like I don't think you're allowed to be talking to me let alone sitting next to me and he was like oh my god be quiet he's like I don't care he's like this is my house I'll do what I want to do if I want to sit next to you and talk to you I'll sit next to you and talk to you she can't do anything about it and I was just like okay relax now that whole entire night me and him literally ended up talking like I'm not even joking we just like it was so weird it was like as if nobody else was there and it was just us two like I'm telling you like our the way that we got along and our chemistry was very very extremely strong and it was like from the first day I met him that it was like that and I think it's just because we're both water signs and a lot of times if you meet a sign that is the same element as you water air or earth or fire like you guys just kind of click like I feel like I'm that way with like literally every water sign I've ever met we just kind of click instantly so we start talking literally the whole entire night until I literally look over and I realize that Ashley has now gone inside everybody else has now left and it's literally just Casey sitting there and she is like literally falling asleep by the second and she's like I think I'm gonna go inside and go to bed but she's like I can't leave you out here by yourself because my dad will like literally kill me because he will we'll think that's rude and I was like oh no no no, don't worry like I will go like no problem I'm so sorry it is literally like one o'clock in the morning so she's like okay she hugs me and she's like have a good night and so it's just me and junior outside and he's like can I please walk you to your car and I was like I don't think that's a good idea and he's like please just like I want to just walk into your car and make sure that you're safe so we end up walking down the steps and going to my car and he just ends up like hugging me and he hugs me like so tight and he's like I wish things were different unfortunately they're not he's like I wish I would have met you sooner I wish I would have met you before but he's like basically the situation that I kind of got from it was he met me and he ended up liking me but unfortunately he already was talking to this girl he wasn't gonna cut things off with her just because he met somebody one time and had feelings for them because that would have hurt her it would have been disrespectful and also he had feelings for her and liked her so he basically was like it's not the right time like I wish I would have met you sooner I wish things that were different and he goes on to basically say like you deserve so much you're such a great girl you have a great head on your shoulders you're beautiful you have a good personality you deserve the absolute best i know that you deserve the best and i know that i can give you the best and i'm in my head like how much of a mixed signal is that right to tell somebody i wish things were different i wish i would have met you sooner i wish that you know like this happened a long time ago that way it could have been you but also on the other hand, be like, you deserve the best and I can give you the best. Like, what is that? I literally don't understand. And as he was hugging me, he like, I could just tell, you could tell when someone wants to kiss you, right? At any given moment, if I had pulled away and like looked up at him, you guys know what I'm talking about. Like when you're hugging someone, you pull away and you look up because you don't want to like kiss them first. You want them to kiss you first. If I would have done that, he would have a hundred percent, a thousand percent kissed me. And Casey even ended up texting me on my way home. And she was like, did Junior end up kissing? you and I was like no I was like I could tell he wanted to but like he was being respectful and she was like oh okay because she's like I literally like would have put money on it that he was gonna kiss you so I ended up just giving a hug and I'm like all right junior like have a good night and he's like I'm gonna call you on the way home because we also exchanged numbers instagrams and snapchat so I was blocked on instagram and I was blocked on snapchat and I was like I don't know if that's a good idea because your girlfriend doesn't want you talking to me clearly he's like I don't care I'm calling you I want to I want to make sure you get home safe so we're on the phone the whole entire time I'm home and he is repeating in the phone you're a beautiful girl you have a great head on your shoulders you have a great personality I wish it was you I wish that I met you sooner I wish things were different but unfortunately they're not and this is what it has to be and then says you deserve the best I can't I know I can give you the best I'm capable of it and I'm like dude pick a fucking side what is going on right now but I could also tell he was like drunk too it was basically that 
Now, fast forward, I end up coming into work one day and Casey the whole entire week was like, I wish that he would just be with you. Guys would be so cute together. I would absolutely love that for like my really good friend and my cousin to be together. That would be so cool. He just was like, I wish you guys would have met sooner. Like I wish he wasn't talking to her and I wish he was talking to you. And then she was telling me basically things like, I don't even like her. Like I don't even understand why he's with her, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So then I end up coming into work one day and Casey tells me, she's like, tell me why I keep wanting to say their names. She's like, tell me why Junior's girl girlfriend blocked you from his phone and I was like what and she was like yeah like I saw junior this morning when I was leaving for work and he told me like tell Dakota that unfortunately my girlfriend blocked her off my phone so I can't text her anymore and listen understood and I was wrong for even number one hugging him when we went downstairs number two talking to him on the way home and having his number anyway like you know what I'm saying if he called me text me whatever I should have shut that down but it was a situation where it was like I like this guy and he has a girlfriend but I want him right and that's not right and in no way shape or form would I have ever let him like kiss me or I never would have done anything with him while he was in a relationship I'm not a home wrecker but I'm not gonna lie I probably would have entertained conversation I'm not gonna lie he if he said feelings for me I probably wouldn't have corrected him been like motherfucker you have a girlfriend get your shit together like there's certain things just because you're not doing something with them physically or just because you're not like saying through a phone that you want to jump through it and like fuck them like doesn't mean that you're not doing anything wrong there's multiple levels of being unfaithful to somebody and as much as he was doing it towards me i wasn't shutting the door i wasn't telling him to stop right it takes two to tangle you can't just blame one person either you are putting a stop to it or you're leaving the door open even if it's like a crack open you're still leaving some room for that person to come in if it's not a hard no it's a maybe and sometimes when it's a maybe people see it as a yes so i take full accountability in that i think this is also like where my trauma comes back from it's more of a thing where it was like again my abandonment wound and my wound got triggered where i just wanted to feel validated i wanted to feel loved i wanted to feel good enough and i wanted to feel like i was first choice right i was so tired of always feeling like i was like a back burner type of girl type of thing and so because of this i wanted to feel like i was front row and i was front center so a lot of times what ended up happening when i was younger is i would compete for male attention almost because it was almost like a competition it was like almost like a oh well like i win you lose type of thing right and it listen I'm not a mean-hearted person. I'm really not. So this wasn't a thing that I was doing intentionally or even to my knowledge. It was a subconscious type of belief that I had in my mind is that if this person picks me, I'm not even just talking about junior. I'm talking about men in general, okay? If this person picks me, I win. I'm first. I'm front and center, right? Not knowing that when a man is toggling between two women, neither wins they both lose it doesn't matter when you are with a man who is elevated who is intentional who is developed you're not going to have to compete for his time you're not going to have to compete for his energy love and attention it's going to be there because he's going to show it to you he's going to respect you enough to have it only be you that he wants this attention from he's not going to seek it from a pool of multiple women he's going to want to lock it in with you and you won't have to compete or play mind games or do all these tricks in order to get him when it's equally yoked and you guys are both in the same field of alignment it will just naturally come together love should not be a competition love should not be a race love should not be oh pick me over her or i could treat you better or i could be the girl to fix you love should just be you are you i am me we are coming together collectively to share our part of life with each other with each other okay nobody else like respectful equally yoked unionship not gonna lie definitely got upset that i was blocked because at this point i really started to like him a lot and i think we also need to normalize that sometimes we like men 
just because of the rejection or just because of the abandonment with like my last relationship that's what i figured out i was trying to figure out why it was taking me such a long time to move past him and i was figuring out why it was taking me such a long time to get over him and then one day i realized it's not him it's not the love i had for him it wasn't our relationship it was the rejection okay him leaving me triggered an abandonment wound from childhood that i had yet to heal from so because he triggered that in me my body felt like it was back in that time where i was abandoned and unsafe so what it created was a trauma bond. He was a void in attachment. I was anxious attachment. Coming together is a perfect storm for a trauma bond. So that at the end of the day was why I was so tied and tethered to this relationship was because I was trauma bonded to it. The only way to get out of that is to heal your attachment style, but also heal your past. Everything that we have ongoing in our current reality right now that is out of alignment or needs healing is linked directly from our childhood. Once you go back and address those old wounds and you create a new experience by creating a new outcome when you get triggered you're not going to feel that same way anymore you're going to find new ways to cope to react and to handle it because you're going to have a new mindset you're going to have a new personal reality when it comes to your triggers i think we need to start addressing as women that healing your abandonment wounds and healing your wounds of rejection are huge because if you don't you will find yourself tethered and obsessed with a relationship and be trauma bonded in a relationship that is horrible for you a lot of relationships that we see now are trauma bonds they're not healthy they're not productive it's not even coexisting it's more like ownership where they're being controlled they're being manipulated they're being abused and they are trauma bonded together and the person who is trauma bonded doesn't know any different because they're equating their current relationship to the relationship that they saw their parents have growing up or lack thereof or just the community in general so basically what they're doing is they're going off of experience of what they saw growing up and they don't know but that's not how love is supposed to be like, which is why healing your attachment style and healing your past childhood wounds and deprogramming all this stuff that we once thought was normal, which actually isn't, is so important. And then doing the new programming, right? Getting to learn the new ways of life, getting to know new ways to validate yourself, new ways of happiness that don't come from a partner who treats you so horribly. Basically what ended up happening with that is that one night they were at a party, it was like a family party, and junior had actually taken casey's phone and texted me off of it and he's like hey it's junior i just wanted to apologize for me having to block you like i'm so sorry i wish i could talk to you but unfortunately i can't and i'm just really sorry and i was like junior it's okay don't even worry about it it's all good so one day i'm on snapchat minding my business as one does and i get a random request and i look at it and it's Damien, which is Casey's cousin, who's also dating my coworker. So I'm like, why would he be adding me? That's kind of weird. But then I was like, oh, well, you know, maybe like, because we just kind of like formally met for the first time and I've been coming around the family a lot. Maybe he just wanted to add me. In hindsight, looking back now, I was his girlfriend's coworker and really good friends with his cousin. So it's like why was i even doing that that literally makes no sense i should not have even accepted it today i posted a video of me singing a song i think it was like god is a woman by ariana grande and damien had messaged me and been like wow you have a really good voice because damien actually sings too so i was like oh shoot like thank you so much and we kind of talked a little bit it was honestly so innocent nothing crazy at all next day i ended up posting a video because this is during that time where the, the um Kiki challenge was around where it's like, Kiki, do you love me? Are you riding? And everybody was doing like the dances and stuff. And this one guy was doing a dance, but he ended up falling and hitting his knee. And so I posted it and he wrote back and he's like, I'm literally crying right now. I am deceased. That is so funny. And we ended up just like laughing about it. And then we ended up kind of having a little conversation and he was literally so funny so freaking hilarious we had this like back and forth banter that was like insane where it's like i'd pop a joke he'd pop one back 10 times funnier then i'd pop one back and then he would pop one back and it was just like really it was just like really cool but in the mind in the back of my mind i'm like okay this is ashley's boyfriend i literally cannot be talking to him right now like i almost even said like halfway through the text like we should not be talking even if it's like a friendly thing like that is i would be pissed so the next day i am at work and I was outside with the kids and I remember Casey was coming in late that day She had like an appointment or something and she comes in and she's like, oh my god You're never gonna guess what happened and I was like what and she's like Damien broke up with Ashley this morning And I'm thinking in my head now listen they had been together for five years at this point five years five 
So I was like kind of shocked. I mean, I knew their relationship wasn't like the best. There was definitely like some things that had happened in that relationship where you could tell like it wasn't going to last. But still, five years is a long time to spend with somebody. So I was kind of shook and I'm like, they broke up? Why? And she was like, I don't know. Like he wouldn't tell me. I just know that he broke up with her. He sent her a text basically saying they need space, etc. And I could see like all day that Ashley was like visibly upset. Like she was upset. She didn't know what to do. She just was like, you know, when you go through a breakup with someone that you love, you just don't really know what to do with yourself like i said you guys this was when i was in my messy era it was never intentional i never was like i want to be messy i never wanted to be like mrs steal your man none of that i just was not self-aware enough to see and recognize what i was doing and it's so embarrassing for me to finish this story and tell you guys what i did and trust me i feel bad i still to this day feel bad i have apologized since then but it doesn't mean that what i did was okay and this is one of those moments where i was like wow dakota you literally were like a piece of absolute garbage we dinner at my house and it was like some fish or something and junior ends up messaging me and being like oh that looks really good and i'm like thanks and he's like how was your day today and i was like oh like it was okay you know i just worked came home cooked now i'm putting my daughter to bed how was yours he's like oh not so good he's like you know i had to break up with ashley and i was like oh yeah i heard about that like sorry about that breakups are never fun this set the tone to us talking for the next three days from sun up to sun down okay he was asking me advice on how he should move forward how he should move on and we started talking about like goals because you know like when you get out of a relationship you like set all these like honestly unrealistic goals for yourself to have a glow up so we started talking about that we started talking about everything from music everything under the sun and we started talking literally you guys i'm not even joking the whole entire day and i felt bad because i was like dakota this is not right and like i'm not stupid i know how guys are i know how guys are no guy is going to sit there on snapchat talking to a girl all day unless he wants to fuck or unless he likes her and wants to pursue something with her guys are not friends like that with girls like i'm sorry to burst y'all's bubble everyone's always like oh guys and girls can be friends no the fuck they can't no the fuck they can't unless you're in like a group of people and you're all friends together and you all have known each other for some time individually guys and no i don't believe that because either the guy likes the girl or the girl likes the guy or there's like sexual tension or they already fucked or they're thinking about fucking i just i've been around it enough times to know that it's completely not fucking true so i knew in the back of my mind what was about to happen and I could have stopped it, but I didn't. We end up talking, you guys, all the fucking time. And we end up becoming pretty close to the point where he basically calls me like his best friend. Now, Casey has no idea that any of this is transpiring. She has no idea that he had me on Snapchat, no idea that we're talking, no idea of absolutely anything. Time goes by and me and Damien end up, <sighs> we end up starting to date. You guys, this is one of my best friend's cousin. This is my coworker. I work with his cousin. I work with his ex, okay? This is my coworker's ex-boyfriend. They just broke up and I'm already talking to him. Even if me and Ashley were not friends, okay? and we were acquaintances, whatever, it's still wrong. We work together, okay? We work together, we're in the same environment. Like, it makes things awkward. It's also awkward for Casey because I never told her. Like, it just, I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. I honestly think I was going through a chaotic time in my life. I had just moved out of my apartment and then moved back to my dad's house. I was like, my pride was just completely hit because I was used to like living in my own place, doing my own thing, and now I was under my dad's freaking roof again. I was going through a really rough time mentally my anxiety and depression were like literally horrible my finances were fucking shot i was at a job that i absolutely hated i absolutely had no passion i wasn't doing youtube i was doing literally nothing my friendships were just not where they should be at that time i feel like i literally had like no friends no one to talk to and i feel like because i was hurting not that i wanted to hurt somebody else but because i was hurting i was just too selfish to care and in my mind i convinced myself that this was okay so we start talking and we basically make a night to hang out the both of us and if you guys want to know what happened that night go watch my past story time about my crazy ex who tried to kidnap me basically he picked me up he was like two three hours late for our date we ended up going to the beach getting food things like that and from then on we developed we weren't in an official relationship yet but we began to date now let me remind you casey don't know none of this okay she knows absolutely none of this casey's birthday comes around you guys her birthday and she was having a party 
at her house in the backyard and I was supposed to go now that day came and Aubrey actually genuinely was sick and my mom couldn't take her but I could have waited for my dad to get out of work he could have watched her and I could have went to the party the party was going all day and all night and I knew that but instead of doing that I was a horrible friend and I told her that Aubrey was sick which she was and she's like oh why don't you just come you know after she's asleep it wasn't that sick when I say sick she had like sniffles and that was justifiable enough for me to be like she's sick because the thing was that it wasn't just about Damien it was awkward because Junior was there I knew Junior's girlfriend was going to be there she already don't like me and has a problem with me me and Junior literally aren't allowed to talk let alone be in the same fucking vicinity and me and Damien kind of have this thing going on we've already hung out we've already established feelings and talk about where we want this to go it's awkward okay so I just ended up lying to her to not go to the party and then when Aubrey did go to sleep that night and my dad did watch her, I ended up going to hang out with Damien. Behind her back, he ended up leaving the party early. She was so mad at him. She was mad at me for not coming. I was a really bad friend, you guys. Like, really, really bad. It like literally was not even funny. Like, I look back at that time and I'm so proud of myself for the growth that I have gone through because I look back at that time and I'm like, wow, like I really hurt people in this situation. When this ended up coming to light, I hurt Ashley, I hurt Casey, I betrayed our friendship, I lie. Like I just was not a good person at this time. And this is something that I have talked about in therapy and consistently worked through. At this time in my life, I was the person that people make fucking story times about, right? I was the bad friend. I was the like home wrecker essentially, even though they were already broken up but like I was that person and it's not an excuse but where I was at mentally and where I was at with not dealing with my childhood trauma was causing me to hurt other people and that's why I say if you do not fix what has broken you you will break other people if you do not fix what is going on internally in that internal conflict and all of these past traumas from either your childhood or your teenage years or early adulthood you are going to bleed on people who didn't cut you you're going to hurt other people at the end of the day you are responsible for that you're responsible for your own actions what you do to other people you are not responsible for what happened to you but you are sure as hell responsible for getting help to overcome and heal from it because it's not fair to project your hurt onto other people because in this situation i fucking hurt other people People. and I was dead ass trying to sit there and tell myself that that was okay and I was toxic and I was a hot fucking mess I was a horrible person and a horrible friend and trust me I've gotten my karma since then and I've learned my lesson and I will never ever do that again ever since I've strengthened my self-esteem my self-love and I have truly learned to value myself never again would I fucking do that because that is literally not okay that night we actually ended up getting into like an official relationship and again Casey has no idea of any of this so one day I'm at work and like I said me and Casey work in the same classroom I had just gotten a new phone and on the iPhone if you don't go into your settings and fix your brightness on your screen what happens is you'll get a notification on your phone and instead of it going away it just stays here like this you could put it down you could do whatever you want the notification will just stay here until you go in and say like dim my phone after five minutes or dim my phone after three minutes so what happened was is Damien snapchatted me and his name was clear as day on the screen and Casey went to go to the back to put some clothes away in one of the kids cubbies and my phone what do you know was on top of the cubbies and she saw that he messaged me now she didn't say anything to me she didn't say anything like why are you messaging my cousin what's going on he just broke up with Ashley that's fucked up what is wrong with you she didn't say anything to me you guys nothing at all in fact I didn't even know that she was mad at me for not going to her party until Damien told me so literally I had like I didn't even know that she knew but I did notice that she started to act a little bit different. So I ended up texting Damien and I was like, yo, like, I think we're caught. And he's like, nah, we're good. What are you talking about? X, Y, and Z. And then she ended up going home and basically like confronting him. And she was like, I don't care what the situation is. I don't care that you're my cousin. I don't care that she's my friend. I do not want you guys together. I will never be okay with it. I will never like it. I will never want it to happen. You guys need to like, basically, if you do have feelings for each other, let them go out the window. Y'all could be friends but that's about it. She was like firm in it. And I remember talking to Damien because I remember saying to him like, do you think one day Casey will be okay with us like being together? Because obviously if she finds out, she's probably not gonna like it. And he's like, oh yeah, honestly, like I think she'll be fine. I think it'll be good. Because keep in mind when me and Junior, his, Damien's brother, her cousin, were kind of like talking, she wanted him 
to leave his girlfriend to be with me so in my mind i was like oh okay like maybe she'll be okay with it but then i thought about ashley but her and ashley were never good friends they only knew each other because of damien and yes she's our co-worker but at the end of the day like she is better friends with me than she is with her so in my mind i was like maybe she'll be okay with it but now looking back i'm like no shit she wasn't fucking okay with it because that was horrible to do so basically we were caught and i was like i think we should tell her and i told damien so many times i think that we should tell her and he always told me absolutely not do not tell her because if she finds out ashley's gonna find out and it's not that i don't want ashley to find out it's just that i don't want her to be hurt he basically was like this absolutely cannot be told cannot be said please wait a couple more months and you know until things kind of die out and then maybe we can talk to her but i literally begged him every single day you guys please let me tell her please let me tell her looking back i definitely should have just told her because it would have at least made me look it wouldn't have made me look as bad fast forward y'all we get caught we get caught so tell me how one day I go into work, right? She comes in and normally when she comes in, she says like, good morning or she'll talk or whatever. Nothing. Doesn't say anything. Radio silence. Puts her stuff down, puts her lunch in the fridge, says nothing. You guys, she didn't talk to me for the whole entire day. And it's not like she came in and said she had a problem. It's not like she came in and said anything. She literally said nothing to me. There was literally one point during the day where I asked her if she could grab something for me and she fucking ignored me. I was like, are you... So I just texted Damien. I was like, yo, we're caught. And he's like, what are you talking about? I was like, I know we're caught. Trust and believe. Like, I 100% know we're caught because she's not speaking to me. The day ends up ending and I end up leaving work. I have to go to the store and grab something. And then I have to go back to get Aubrey because Aubrey also goes to the school that I work at. He basically randomly calls me and he's like, hey, yeah, like you're 100% right we are caught and i was like what happened and he's like apparently i left my phone out on the table and she came downstairs to go like ask my mom something because like i said she lives upstairs he lives downstairs it's like a duplex apartment type thing and i guess i was like calling him or something and my name on his phone was dakota so she saw that she was like I'm not fucking stupid. I know something is going on. I know you guys are not just friends. Just fucking tell me the truth. Like, I'm not stupid. But she didn't say this to him yet, but she was going to say it to him eventually, I guess, when she got home that day. But... When she came into work, I guess she was so angry at me because she knew like something was going on that she didn't want to talk to me. So tell me how when I come back in, I have to go get Aubrey. Before I go get Aubrey, I'm like, oh, I have to go back to my classroom. I forgot my water bottle. So I go into my classroom to get to my water bottle and bitch fucking Ashley is in my classroom talking to Casey. Hey. Hey. How y'all doing? Do you know how awkward that was to walk into that? Because I know for a fact at that point that Casey told fucking Ashley, which, listen, I understand, I get it, but couldn't you wait a couple of days? Like, why did you have to tell her right away that I was with her ex-boyfriend? Couldn't you have waited a couple of days? This girl wasted no time, waited until I was out of that building, called Ashley to her room and was like, yeah, Dakota and Damien are dating now. I caught her calling him last night. And I think that they've been like talking for a while. Like, you couldn't wait two days, girl. So I ended up getting my water bottle, getting Aubrey and going home. And thank God that that day was like a Friday because I didn't have to like, go back to work the next day and I was like okay maybe we'll take the weekend and maybe it will be a little less awkward when I go back to work Monday maybe me and Casey could work it out no do you guys know from that day forward she never spoke one word to me again never texted me never called me never talked to me at work absolutely nothing she completely stopped fucking talking to me and we had to work together. Do you know how awkward that was? Ashley ended up finding out and she was like devastated. Of course, she, she was like, she doesn't have a fucking mean mo bone in her body. So she would never say anything to me. And same thing with Casey. Like she didn't ever say anything to me. Nobody ever like made me feel uncomfortable. It more so was a thing where it was like, nobody was just fucking talking to me. And then this other girl that they were friends with too at work, like the three of them turned against me and like nobody was talking to me. And it was awkward because the other girl from across the room that was cool with Ashley and cool with Casey I had to like pass her kids at times or like ask her for something or like sometimes we didn't have enough milk so we had to ask another room for milk like and she was right there so none of them were fucking with me none of them were talking to me literally freaking nothing and I was just like I understand but we're at work keep it professional this caused an absolute uproar with everything okay with my job with his family because at this point like I said Casey and Damien are cousins they live literally 
right up and down from each other they were not talking not speaking they were both mad basically damien was mad at casey because she had told ashley about what was going on because he was like at the end of the day like yes i understand why she was mad but she didn't have to go and tell ashley like ashley wouldn't have known if she had not said anything like that's what pisses me off is that she intentionally it wasn't like she was telling her to be a good friend she was doing it to be messy because one thing about casey too and it's not to like talk bad about her or anything but she liked drama so she would do like little like sneaky things like that and you could tell it wasn't to be a good person it was to be messy so she basically told her because she just was like well i'm mad and i'm hurt so someone else is going to be mad and hurt too and she she didn't have to tell her they weren't even that good of friends honestly she only knew her because of Damien, because that was his previous girlfriend. So he was mad at her for that. She was mad at him for going behind her back and talking to me and like creating drama, whatever. So it caused an uproar with the family. It caused an uproar with my job. Like you guys literally, do you want to know what fucking happened? I'm going to get more into the daycare series, but I decided I wanted to go back to school, right? So I went and I told my boss, I would like to be a floater, which means that I will let go of my classroom and give it to somebody else and I will be a floater. I'll go around and do bathroom breaks, lunch breaks, etc. Instead of being a full-time head teacher, I will go down to part-time and I will be a floater. I tell them that. And I had planned to take a week off from work because I had, you know, some vacation time. So I was like, hey, from this week to this week, I want to be off for this week. And then when I come back, I want to start floating, which means that I won't be in my classroom anymore. So this week right now is going to be the last week in my classroom. It was a Wednesday, you guys, when this was all discussed. So they're like, you know what? Yes, perfectly fine. You can just finish out the days in your classroom today and tomorrow and Friday. And then next week you'll be off. And then when you come back, school's going to start because it was like the end of August. And they were like, you know, you can start floating. No problem. I'll go and tell, you know, Casey, I'll tell your co-teacher. We'll work something out, etc. One day I'm at work and it's nap time. And when some of the kids wake up, you have to have another teacher in there with you otherwise you're like out of ratio because if you have eight kids in there and they're all sleeping so it's eight kids to two teachers four kids to one but if all eight kids are sleeping you're technically in ratio you can stay in there by yourself while your other teacher goes in their lunch break or goes to the bathroom and gets supplies or whatever they have to do right the kids are waking up and I'm calling over the intercom. I'm like, I need a teacher in this room. I need a teacher in this room. And I don't know where Casey is at this point. She had been gone for two hours. Her lunch break had come and gone. It was over. So I'm like, where the fuck is she? So I keep calling, keep calling, keep calling. Casey walks in the room with this, oh, I will never fucking forget it. This smirk on her face, like, like, so like Elsie, like Lauren Conrad, like I was Kristen and she was Elsie and she was like, and I'm like, bitch, what the fuck? So tell me how I'm getting my stuff and I'm getting ready to leave it at the end of the day and I'm walking up to clock out and right where the computer was where you clock out for the day, the office is. My managers bring me in and they're like, can we talk to you? And I'm like, oh, here we fucking go. I knew something happened. I knew something happened. Now let me remind you, this is Wednesday. I only have two days left to finish out my days in this classroom and then the week after I'm on vacation and the week after I'm a floater. So all this girl had to wait was two more days to be in the same classroom with me and then I would have been gone out of that classroom. I was gonna give it to her. I was like, here, you could be head teacher. I will take this off. I will, you know, go do whatever and I will go float and then you don't have anything to do with me. We can keep it calm, cool, and professional because that's what you do when you're an adult at a job. So... I went in there and they were like, so we don't know what's going on. Liars. They fucking knew what was going on because Casey and the assistant director were actually cool. Because like I said, she was the one who hired her because she knew her from her previous job. They're like, we don't know what's going on with you and Casey, but you know, Casey did. And let me remind you guys, hold on. In this classroom, Casey did not speak to me at all. And I did not speak to her. There was no negative energy. There was no tension. There was nothing. We just didn't talk. And it was fine. Like it wasn't like... It wasn't like toxic or chaotic or threatening. Casey told us that right now you guys are having a rough time and you're not talking and that, you know, you've been doing some aggressive behavior lately in the classroom. And so because of this, Casey feels very threatened to be and very extremely uncomfortable to be in the classroom with you because she feels like you're threatening her. Cut the fucking camera. Are you kidding me? You have got to be joking and let me remind you i only have two more days all she had to do was deal with me for two more days and i wouldn't have been out of her hair are you okay 
So like because of this, we're gonna have to remove you from the classroom uh, effective tomorrow. Uh, today was your last day there because we can't have this type of behavior going on. And you know, we're not saying that we're taking sides, but you know, just because it is kind of convenient because you are gonna be on vacation next week and the week after when you come back you're going to be floating you know we just want to keep everything cordial and professional so we feel it's best to remove you out of the classroom so that will be effective tomorrow no is this okay with you no dakota you've been here for the past five years and we're going to give you the choice of whether you want her out or you leave because you have seniority here no what happened no can we get your side of things nothing just cutthroat dry effective tomorrow you were out of your classroom and here's my thing what if i wasn't going to school what if i wasn't going on vacation next week what if i would go on vacation and come back and i was still a full-time teacher in my classroom you're telling me that no matter what even if i wasn't making these changes already and i was going to be out of there and leave there anyway you were going to take my classroom from me that's what i always to this day sit back and wonder what if the situation was that I was still staying in that classroom and I wasn't leaving. Y'all would still throw me out like that even though I've been here for fucking five years and this bitch has been here for four months. And also, at that job, I am not even saying this to brag, I was one of the best teachers there. And they even said it themselves. They said it to all the people that came in, like the district leaders. They would come into my classroom and be like, this girl has the best classroom in the whole, like one of the best classrooms in the whole entire building. This girl needs to be doing tours. This girl needs to be more in a manager position. You guys need to promote her, things like that. They would tell other parents, like if I wasn't there, they'd be like, oh, where's Dakota? They'd be like, oh, you know, she's not here today, but you know, she'll be back tomorrow. Don't worry. Like all the parents would ask me, be like, where's Dakota? What's going on? Like, um, they would be like, oh yeah, she's like one of the best teachers here. We value her so freaking much. So it went from, she's one of the best teachers here to we value her so much to you know her presence is an asset and needed here to basically fuck you because Casey came in here and said that you're a threat to her you know, it doesn't matter take all that away basically fuck you and you're losing your classroom I was livid I was absolutely fucking livid I was so mad and the other thing is too is that Casey had been do okay she i'm gonna get into this in the daycare series to wrap this up she had been doing things that were shady like she would walk in and she would be annoyed by something that one of our managers did and they would like say something to her say they would be like casey you know when you come in you really have to start like cleaning up after breakfast because the parents are complaining she'd come in and be like oh my god um the managers came in today and they said that we're dirty and that we're slobs and that we don't clean up after breakfast and that we need to get our stuff together and that we need we need we need she would make it a we thing or she would lie and say that they said that about me and one thing about me is that I'm a confrontational person so I'd go in there and I'd be like so what is this about you guys telling Casey to tell me that I need to clean up after myself and that I'm messy and etc and they would be like Dakota what are you talking about we told her that or they'd be like no it's just you know the parents were complaining so we had to address it and I told her to relay the information back to you because you weren't going to be available like she would literally make it seem like they were talking about me because in all actuality they were talking about her and because she's not confrontational she would say that because she knew that I was confrontational that I would go say something and this happened so much at my job where like something would be happening and somebody wanted to say something but they were too scared to so they would come to me with it and make it seem like it was a me problem or that they were talking about me but really they were talking about one of my other co-workers so that way I would go in there and say something and to this point my managers loved me they literally were like I wish we could have a sign here that said why can't all employees be like Dakota like they literally loved me until I started going in there and complaining because I thought I was being talked about and I was wasn't gonna let that slide and I wasn't like rude or disrespectful I just was like what is this about like why are you guys saying this to other people instead of me like this is very unprofessional and so because of that they were looking at me as like she's coming in here she's complaining too much and now she's got this drama with Casey and etc like she's got to go basically right what ended up happening was I ended up leaving that job because they stopped putting me on the schedule they stopped putting me on the schedule they put me on on call knowing that I have a baby to feed knowing that I have no other source of income, knowing that I need this job more than anybody here, they stopped putting me on the schedule because of the situation that was going on with me and Casey, an employee that had been there for two fucking months when I was there for five years. When you come through those doors, they would always say, when you come into this daycare, you take that, you put a hat on and all that stuff that's happening outside of the door, you leave out there. And then when you leave this daycare, you could take that hat off and go deal with your stuff and do what you gotta do. But whatever you got have going on, it stays at the door. So keep that same energy. Why when you 
are in the building and there's stuff going on with a coworker outside of work, why can't you have that hat on and leave that shit outside the door? That's what I want to know. If you're going to say something, be consistent with it. Don't talk, a be, don't talk about it, be about it. Like, keep that same energy. What's going on with Casey, Ashley, anybody in this job is completely irrelevant. Because we should all be able to be adults. Let me remind you, Casey was three fucking years older than me, almost 30. Why can't we just be adults and be professional? I could float and not even have to go into her classroom and eventually they'll fucking get over it. What I have going on outside of this job should not pertain to me keeping my job or not. Took me out of the classroom and they said, you're going to start floating. Okay, I floated for two days, Thursday and Friday. That following week, I was off for a week. Okay, the week after I was supposed to start my new schedule because I was going to school. So here I am Friday night. So here I am Thursday night prepping to start work on Monday, right after and I wasn't on vacation. And what I meant was I took time off like I had like over time I had vacation hours to use and things like that because I never fucking called out at that job I maybe called out four or five times the whole time I was there I never called out I was always on time no I wasn't on time but I was always there I would work extra if they needed to move I wouldn't take lunch breaks some fucking days because I wanted to help out I did everything possible for those people okay and I'm here waiting for the schedule to come out and it comes out and it says on call for me for the whole entire week and I'm like so I call her and I'm like why am I on call like you said that after this week I can start my new schedule and they were like oh well we talked about budgeting with the district leader and they said that all of our part-time people we're gonna have to start cutting down because we don't have enough money so it's not a personal thing it's just business don't worry you're gonna get your hours back it's just right now money is really tight like the company's kind of going through like some period where there's like not enough money coming in meanwhile these parents come here and pay almost four hundred dollars a week for their kids to come here a mortgage you're talking about you don't got money like that where's it all going embezzlement so she's like don't worry hon you're gonna get your hours back you'll be fine next week comes around on call next week comes around they put me on call for a month and then i found out the schedule that I was supposed to have, I was supposed to work from 6 to 1 and then leave and then go to school for the day. They gave that to another teacher who was a full-time infant teacher who had been there for one month. They gave her that schedule and allowed her to work there from 6 to 1 and then go to school. But told me they couldn't give that to me because there was budget cuts. You know what? Grass is fucking greener. You want to know why? I ended up finally leaving that job. Because I had been itching to leave that job for a fucking minute, okay? Leaving that job, moving on, becoming successful, having my own business, and now I'm thriving. So thank you, because you guys walked so I could fucking run. So thank you for that. Best thing you could have done for me was putting me on call, because if I was working at that daycare now, my mental health would be so bad. That job made me so depressed. It was one of the worst places to work at. So thank you. Like, sincerely thank you, because... I would not be where I am today if it wasn't for y'all cutting me off like that. Yeah, basically, long story short, me and Damien ended up continuing my relationship for about seven months. It was definitely awkward because, like, holidays were, like, literally so awkward. Like, I remember on New Year's was, like, the first holiday that I was going to spend with, like, some of his family. And just fucking Junior walking in with his girlfriend, who I now had seen and met for the first time, and just, like, his cousins coming in, and now me and Damien are together after I used to like Junior. And then there was one time where we were there, and it was me Damien Jr. and fucking Liam awkward as hell me and Casey never ended up talking again never ended up being friends again I did end up apologizing to her I sent her like a letter because she literally blocked me on fucking everything but I ended up like sending her a letter um she never responded or said anything after that the time that I dated my co-workers cousin also his best friend and his brother <sighs> you guys at the end of the day what I basically wanted to aim by posting this video, recording it, editing it, and posting it, is know your worth, know your value, heal your attachment style, seek validation from within yourself instead of other people. Because if I had known my worth, loved myself, had my self-esteem and my value at where it should be as a woman, I would have shut this shit down. And I wouldn't have hurt people in the process. When you have the confidence and the self-esteem and the self-love, you will save yourself from so many problems in life. If you are like me, or if you were like me, 
also know that you can change. I am not the girl that I once was. I am a completely different person now. I did a whole entire 180 and I would be damned if I ever was in a situation like this again. And I'm here to show you guys, I'm a living testimony that you could be a toxic person and learn and heal and grow and change. And this was one of those times that plain and simple, I was a really toxic person and I did something really messed up and I hurt a lot of people and I betrayed people's trust and I was a piece of shit, quite frankly. But after this, I went on my celibacy journey for a year and a half. I didn't have sex with anybody, didn't touch anybody, didn't talk to anybody, nothing. And I had the biggest spiritual awakening. I found my self-worth, my self-confidence, my self-esteem. I learned because I was alone for a year and a half to seek validation from myself instead of other people. And with the world we're in today, with Instagram, and we're focused on, oh, how many people like my picture? How many people viewed my story? Or we have these artists who make these songs. It's like, I could take your man if I want to. Or like, all of these things, like, where girls are just basically talking about, like, I could take your man. I could set your man. I could have your man. It's like, it puts out this facade to women that we are in a competition. It puts out this message to women that... You are not good enough unless you're taking somebody's man. You are not good enough unless somebody else's man wants you. And you see so many girls these days bragging like, oh, her man wants me, her man messages me, or we fuck on the low, or he messages me on the low. That's not something to be proud of, sis. It is never okay to talk to somebody else's boyfriend or if they break up immediately and move on to you. And you, if, even if your acquaintance is with them, it's not okay. Don't be like me and be like, oh, well, we're not friends. Like, no, it was fucked up either way. And I knew that it was messed up, but I was so in my ego and I had not gone through my spiritual awakening yet. And I had not, I was so out of touch with my higher self. I was so out of alignment in my life. I was operating completely with ego. The ego was in the front seat and it was not letting go anytime soon. And me being with this guy and him picking me validated my ego 100%. And listen, I paid for it. Trust and believe, which is why I went celibate for a year and a half to get my shit together. And I also had to realize, why do I feel so little about myself that I feel like I'm not enough or I'm not worthy unless I'm seeking male validation and attention? I had to completely cut that out and stop doing that and be alone and by myself for a year and a half of celibacy and discernment and being intentional with my time and my energy to realize that I am enough. Self-awareness, spirituality, all these things are great, but they're nothing without accountability. And looking at yourself, it is the most, it is the highest form of self-care to look in the mirror and to have the accountability and self-awareness to say, the life that we are living right now is not the life that we should be living. What we're doing right now is not okay. How we're acting right now is not okay. And we need to change that. That's how you know you love yourself is when you can look in the mirror, you can say, I am the reason for 89% of the problems in my life right now. And the only person that could change that is me. Other people could help me. But at the end of the day, I'm the only person that could change that. It all starts and ends with me. Change starts and ends with me. Growth, accountability, awareness, it all starts and ends with me. And once you realize that and own your power and stand within it, 10 toes deep, okay? that's when your fucking life changes. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it, you learned something from it or got something from it. If you did enjoy it today, don't forget to give it a like, subscribe, it is free. Leave a comment down below. Let me know if you've ever been in a situation like this. Also, again, let me know if you're taking any trips anywhere. Don't forget to also subscribe to my personal development podcast, Sis Let's Heal. The link is always directly in my bio, but it is also available on all streaming platforms. Thank you guys so much for allowing me to come on here and share my mistakes, share my trials, share my tribulations and my pain and turn them into my testimony. And for me to just come on here and be honest with you guys about how sometimes I was the bad person. Like, I'm not the victim in every single story and I will never pretend like I am. I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.